Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Lincolnshire series, a district of 56 parishes in the north of Lincolnshire. Let's see which one we're visiting today. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire, everybody. Now today, I'm starting again on the banks of the River Trent. It's over there right behind this pub called the Ferry House, which has a riverside restaurant, according to that sign there. Let's go and have a look at the Trent to start things off. The Trent's very important to this place because the name of this place um, is Danish in origin. And one of the words in it means stage or landing stage. And that landing stage would have been on this river. Here we go, here's the Trent. We've seen this a million times before. Doesn't that look beautiful this morning? This, my friends, is Burton upon Stather. <laughs> This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. And this video is also sponsored by Jamie's Fitness Studio. Based on Low Road Grayingham near Curtin and Lindsay, Jamie is one busy lady. Check her out by calling 07906 749 574 or emailing hello at jamies.co.uk. Online membership is available. There's a link to her Facebook page in the description. Jamie's Fitness Studio. Get fit, get happy, get healthy. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Burton upon Stather, commonly known as Burton, is situated five miles north of Scunthorpe on the eastern bank of the River Trent. The parish consists of three settlements. These are Burton upon Stather and the hamlets of Normanby and Tealby, and the three places are connected by roads which form an elongated triangle. Burton's name is interesting. Usually, if a place is upon something, it's normally referring to a river. Here, upon Stather refers to a landing stage on the River Trent, and it derives from the Danish word stave. Burton owes its very existence to that landing stage. It was a thriving industrial settlement. Up until 1914, the landing was used as a calling place by steamers between Gainsborough and Hull. Burton has had a port for nearly 2,000 years, dating back as far as Roman times. In 1342, it was even mentioned in a royal charter. Perhaps its most famous feature, though, is the tank ramp, used during World War II to test the duplex drive amphibious tank prior to its use for river crossings. It's a place synonymous with the Sheffield family, with brick and tile works, and with a bus company named Dugout, whose vehicles had a dark green livery with gold lettering. In all, this was a fascinating place. Let's go and have a look at it. We start on the River Trent in the general area of where Burton's landing stage would have been located. This part of the village is known as the Stather, and there's a small river port down here called Kings Ferry Wharf. With a berth of some 61 metres, Kings Ferry has the deepest water in the River Trent, and like many of the ports along the Humber, timber is the major import here. It used to be John Ray's shipyard. Some 342 vessels were built here before it closed in 1892. This is also the location of a former ferry over the Trent, which you might have already guessed, given the name of this pub. 
The Ferry House Inn holds an annual beer festival, according to the website Wattpub. You can also find the popular Riverside Restaurant here too. Now from here, the plan was to go and visit the tank ramp next, but it was closed temporarily. No worries though, because that's why the internet exists. Here's a special section about Burton's most famous feature. The tank ramp is also known as the Slipway. It was constructed in May 1944 by the 79th Armoured Division and saw military use until around 1948. Its primary purpose was for secret testing of the duplex drive amphibious tank. These were to be used during the war for river crossing assaults. The military spent much time carefully choosing a suitable site that resembled areas of the Rhine in order to perfect river crossing techniques. The river crossing wing, as it became known, undertook trials on the Trent and trained squadrons of men for operations in Europe between August 1944 and April 1945. It's now preserved by the Burton upon Stather Heritage Society. So here's the entrance to the wharf, right here, almost at the end of the road. I'm not going to walk into there, obviously, because it's private land, but that's where you go for the wharf. And the other way, this road runs into the village proper if you like past a, a very nice interesting row of houses called the old row which is that row there the white cottages you can see there so i'm going to drive into but upon stather proper now to start the main walk up this road with the camera on the dash hopefully i'll catch the old row a bit better uh, than from this distance on the way in fact, I can do a bit better than just getting close. I can drive down Old Row for a short distance. It's not recommended, mind you, because it's quite narrow. Old Row sits directly to the north of something else Burton was once famed for. That would be a brick and tile works known locally as Burton Brickyards. There were two clay pits owned by J. Franks and Sons, who also ran other brickyards locally at locations including South Ferriby and Barton upon Humber. On the excellent Burton Heritage website, a man from Altborough recalls that all the workers at the brickyard lived in the Stather. Clay was dug from the pits during the winter, and during the summer it was turned into bricks, pipes and slates. Burton brickyards would close in around 1965 or 1966, and now they've been turned into a popular location for fishing, known as Burton Brick Ponds, and you can access them from Chafer Lane. Now, let's go into the village and get walking. Okay, so our start and finish point here in Burton upon Stather is just outside the Sheffield Arms, which is a pub right there. And that's right next door to the church, which is behind these gates. So let's go. Burton's Grade 1 listed Anglican Parish Church is dedicated to St Andrew. It was initially built in 1160 and it had a tower added in 1230. The church was restored and altered in 1865 and restored again in 1889. Inside, there are monuments which originated at Oston Ferry. There's also an effigy of a knight with a sword brought from Boston, a cannonball from the Battle of Sol Bay, and many monuments relating to the Sheffield family. Rather unusually, the church is used on selected days of the week as the village's post office. The opening times are right here on the door. Underneath it is a list of church services for all five churches in the local group. As well as Burton, these are Altborough, West Halton, Witton and of course Flixborough, the one remaining church of the five we've yet to get a look at. Keep it in mind though, it's probably the most important of the lot. So we'll have a, a quick look around uh, the graveyard, this is the uh, churchyard. Some uh, cremation gardens here, one here to my left and also one to my right, a bit bigger. Looking very colourful this morning. And then if we head down this path it will take us into one of Burton's housing estates. I usually leave all the cemetery stuff, generally speaking, to Nicky, but uh, yeah, while I'm here. Look at these trees by the way. They're interesting been cut down haven't they they've been chopped tops have been chopped off these oh and just before we leave the churchyard behind i'd better show you this fabulous view 
this shot doesn't really do it justice. You can see for miles. I could pick out the water tower and church at Ludington here with ease. And now we're into one of Burton upon Stather's many housing estates. There are three main ones. This one is to the north of the village, and it's the one which was built most recently. There's not much to see here really, so as such, we'll skip through it for now. Next is T Lane. Behind the trees over there, you'll find a water tower, an imposing white structure which is known locally as the funnel, thanks to its shape. Next, it's a walk down T Lane to Derby Road. Burton has a lot of bikes, and by that I mean just by simply walking around, you'll spot no end of them outside properties. Some are used as stalls, like this one for example. It sells flowers usually, but there were none here today. Right, let's have a look at the bus information. It's the number 60 you need here, and it runs to Witten, and I assume goes to Scunthorpe, you'd have thought. Yeah. Monday to Friday, except public holidays and Saturday. No service on a Sunday or a public holiday. To the south of Derby Road, we've got another large housing estate, which is flanked to its eastern side by the long thoroughfare Wiltshire Avenue. Most of the streets on this estate, not all, are named after English counties. On Norfolk Avenue, we find the village's surgery, which is a vital village amenity. However, it's what's outside this that I was much more interested in. It's a bench made from a tree trunk, which has been beautifully carved. This includes a line from a poem, the name of which is on the back of the bench. The line featured reads, "'Tis good to be at Burton when summer's on the hills." I'd argue the same goes for any time of year, really. Back to Wiltshire Avenue via Huntingdon Crescent, and we start to see a few green spaces here and there. Burton has a few of these, although the largest open space can be found at the end of Wiltshire Avenue. Okay, we've reached the playing field, and there's a bowls club dead opposite it. Here it is. Let's put the camera through here. There you go. Immaculate bowling green, as ever. Good to see. All right, let's head across into the playing field. Very large playing field. This I passed this as I was driving into Burton upon Stather this morning, so I know this is quite a large one. And there's a playground too. In fact, there's two playgrounds. I just noticed a second one. There's one over there behind that building, and a second one, which is a multi-use games area, over here, just there above my finger. Burton Playing Fields is a section of land on the outskirts of the village, with facilities including a children's play area, a basketball court, various sports fields, and a pavilion. It's also used by various local football teams. On the side of the pavilion, there's a nice little piece about a local walking route. It's possible to use the local footpath network and a permissive path to walk from Burton to Tealby to Normanby and back to Burton in a neat little loop. Now we've hit the avenue, and notice this is tree-lined on both sides. Initially, the avenue was lined with elm trees, which were planted by Sir John Sheffield. Sometime prior to the 1970s, these were cut down and then replaced. Off the avenue is Flixborough Road, where we find the village's primary school. Originally built in 1939 to cater for the ever-growing population, it replaced the three small Victorian village schools in Burton, Tilby and Normanby. Okay, so at the end of this road, we need to take a footpath. The road bends around to the right. We need to carry straight on. It will take us into a wood, and I hope that this is waymarked properly, because otherwise I might get lost. We'll soon find out. As it turns out, it didn't really need to be waymarked. This seems to be an old, disused road. Even though it's now unsuitable for vehicles, and technically illegal to drive on anyway because it's a bridleway, you could in theory drive this. It runs all the way to Flixborough Industrial Estate if you wanted to go that far. The clump of trees we're in go by the pretty simple name of Burton Woods, and they line a steep hillside known as the Jurassic Ridge. Halfway down the ridge, we take a footpath which runs north. This is the same hillside, by the way, that we drove up earlier from the Stather, and that we walked along in Altborough. As such, there's some great views of the Trent up here in places. 
The path reaches a junction close to a sewage works, and as nice as that would be to see, we're now starting to make our way back into the village, and it's not an easy task. We have, after all, just come down a hill. Effectively, what we've done here is we've climbed down the cliffside, and of course, what goes down must go back up. And this is quite a struggle. This is very steep. I imagine the uh, elevation graph on Strava will look quite interesting after this. So uh, yeah, I may include this at this point to show you how much of a dip we've come down and then had to go back up again. There's some steps there, thankfully. The mobile library was passing as I hit civilization again. This visits Burton every Tuesday. It stops at a number of sites in the village, but the majority of its time is spent in the car park of the medical center on Norfolk Avenue. Now we're starting to hit the village center, and Burton has its fair share of amenities. On Normanby Road, we've got a hair salon. This is called Hair Care, and it's undergone a transformation recently because the Google Street View image looks wildly different to this. It's the high street next where there's a few more businesses. If you're a fan of oriental food, Mai Ling has you covered. This is Burton's Chinese takeaway, located at number 24. Just beyond this, we've got a parish notice board. I was beginning to think I would never find one, but mark it off folks, 13 to go in North Lincolnshire. This is on the side of the parish council office. It's not that long ago that a phone box once stood close to here too, but it's now been removed. So this is quite a, a nice old worldy village centre. I like it. Here we've got the old village store, which is not a new build, but it's obviously been extended or um, rebuilt at some point because it's nothing like its next door neighbour. Above these three windows here, you can see a, a stone up there. That says Central Stores. And I think it's either 1923 or 1823. It's more likely to be 1823, I think. Although that does look like a nine. Anyway, whichever it is. We've also got this building here. This has got 1818 above the door. <clears throat> this looks like an old pub, but again, I'm not totally sure if it was. There's obviously something here at some point. Quite what that was, I don't know. But above the door here, there's this fantastic little gargoyle, which I noticed under the 1818. Check this out. Doesn't he look gruesome? <laughs> and then you've got the current village shop, which is just a few more paces up here. Here we are, on the end of this row. And we're heading down the little street to the right of this, because that's where the village hall is. The street in question is Todd's Lane, and there are two landmarks of note down here. One of them is Westland Social Club. This hosts a coffee morning every Wednesday, and it's the base for many a village event. The other is the Village Hall. This has two main rooms. The smaller of these is known as the Wedgwood Room, used as a meeting room or for small functions. The main hall has a beautiful oak wood floor, perfect for dancing on, apparently. Back on the high street, here's the Methodist Church. This was built in 1868 and it was known originally as Burton Jubilee. It was originally a primitive Methodist chapel. Burton once had a Wesleyan chapel too, on Norfolk Avenue. Overlooking all of this is the village pub, the Sheffield Arms, a building which has been a prominent feature of Burton since 1687. It was originally known as the Black Bull, and it was rebuilt in 1903 and renamed to the Sheffield Arms in 1905. Okay, almost done with the main walk. Here we've got the paddock, and this is where you'll find the War Memorial, which I'm just going to make my way across to. It's just there. Uh, that stone you can see with the flagpole next to it. That's the War Memorial. And uh, keep this uh, area in mind because later I'll be coming back here after I've um, been off and covered Tealby and Normanby because on one of these benches, probably this one, I'll be meeting one of Burton upon Stabber's residents. Stick around until the end. The War Memorial is a simple stone which was installed here in 2014. As with all war memorials, this commemorates the local fallen in the two world wars. Wreaths are laid at it each year on Armistice Day. 
The paddock's official name, by the way, is the Glebe Paddock, but most locals know it as the Chicken Field. It was purchased from the Diocese of Lincoln in 1998 so that it could be preserved for the benefit of the local community. Directly opposite that we have the Old Vicarage Lodge. This is one of 31 listed buildings in the parish. Ten of these are in Burton, six are in Tealby, and the remaining 15 can be found in Normanby. That's quite a haul. And with that we're back to where we began on Churchgate. The rear of the Sheffield Arms is away to our left, and we're surrounded by some more of the village's oldest buildings. Now let's get into the car and go and check out Tealby. Tealby is the smallest of the three settlements within Burton upon Stathers boundaries. It's located about half a mile away from Burton on the road out towards Winterton. And speaking of Winterton, last week in the Winterton episode I made a brief mention of Winterton and Tealby railway station. It was located to the northeast of Tealby, and the site of the station is right on the parish boundary between Burton upon Stather and Winterton. Tealby has had both Wesleyan and Primitive Methodist chapels in its time, and the school which was once located here was closed by the year 1900. These days, in truth, Tealby doesn't have a great deal, although it does have a children's play area. That's located to our left here on land which the parish council leases from the Normanby estate. It's the only facility available for children in the hamlet. Other than this, the place is just a pretty little locale to drive through as we head for Normanby. And Normanby was supposed to be a major part of this episode. I'm heading for the entrance to Normanby Hall Country Park, which was where I'd planned to finish. However, as I'm about to explain, that had to be rethought. So my original plan was to film some shots of Normanby Hall. I emailed them and asked them if I could do so. They said I was allowed to, but only if I paid £200 for a filming licence. And uh, yeah, I don't have that kind of money, so I opted just to uh, use pictures for this part. And it's quite an important part of this uh, parish, actually, Normanby Hall. Here's the hall in question, by the way. You can see it's on the village sign. So at least we have a picture of it that I can get with the GoPro. But for the rest of this, I will have to use pictures. So here's a special section about Normanby Hall. Normanby Hall is a classic English mansion built between 1825 and 1830 to the designs of Robert Smirk. It replaced a previous 17th century building and the Sheffield family have lived on this site since 1539. They're a family with a royal connection. You see, in 1703, John Sheffield held the title of Duke of Buckingham. He built a fine mansion in London and called it Buckingham House. These days, it forms part of one of the most famous buildings in the world. Buckingham Palace. Normanby Hall was extended and altered in the early 1900s and the Sheffield family would move out in 1963. The hall is now in the care of North Lincolnshire Council. Its grounds, which run to some 350 acres, are now a country park. Within it, there's a number of features, including a restored working Victorian walled garden, a farming museum, duck ponds, a deer sanctuary, a fishing lake, a miniature railway and a stable yard with a life-size horse and rider sculpture by Harold Gosney. It's perhaps no wonder that filming comes at a cost here. These are the gates you'll see almost immediately as you enter Normanby. The hall is literally just behind these. The Normanby estate has had a famous resident in recent times. That would be Samantha Cameron, the wife of the former Conservative Prime Minister David Cameron, who grew up on the estate. Let's have a little look around Normanby village before we go back to Burton. Normanby is a linear affair, with most of its properties lining Main Street. Normanby's National School, which was built here in 1846 by Robert Sheffield, was the largest of the three in the area. It could hold about 130 children. It's a typical estate village, full of properties which all have historical connections to Normanby Hall. This road, by the way, eventually becomes the avenue when it reaches Burton. Speaking of which, it's almost time to head back to the paddock now. But just before we go back into Burton upon Stather, you guys need today's picture bit.
All right, we're back at the paddock and I'm just waiting for the man himself to show up. His name is Dave or David and uh, we went to school together in uh, Gainsborough. Queen Elizabeth High School. He's moved obviously up here to Burton upon Stather because this is not in the school's catchment area. And of course I've gone elsewhere. I'm in Rotherham now. And I haven't seen him since I left school in 2002. And speaking of 2002, that's also the year that this bench, we'll, which we will be sat on, was placed here for the Queen's Golden Jubilee. He shouldn't be very long. So uh, yeah, can't wait to see him after 20 years. So here he is, the man in question. This is Dave, who lives on Tea Lane. Hello. Hello, Dave. How are we doing? Not so bad, not so bad. Now, you grew up locally, didn't you? I did, yeah. I grew up only um, sort of five minutes away from here, really, so I know the area pretty well. Brilliant. And that was in Normanby, wasn't it? It was, yeah. 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 So how long have you been in Burton? I lived in Burton for about six years. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, knew the area as a child and sort of wanted to to move here when i got a bit older and stuff and luckily everything fell into place and uh, are we happy here very happy yeah it's a really really nice village it's sort of small enough where you know a lot of people um and there's a lot of village activities going on um that community feel but also big enough that there's actually a few amenities and things so local shops really good there's a Chinese takeaway, doctor's surgery, that sort of thing. So it strikes quite a nice balance, I think. Right, okay. And um, are you a regular in the pub over there, the Sheffield Arms? Well, it's often changing ownership, sadly. So hopefully, the I, I think probably a month or so ago, we've got another new owner. So we're hoping that um, she makes a bit of a go of it. I think she's sort of starting to put her own ideas in place and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, certainly uh, it's nice to pop in there on a winter's day after a walk for a pint or something like that but it's been so intermittent with ownership recently that um, it's been a bit tricky to do that but hopefully a fresh fresh start and um, we'll be able to go a little bit more frequently. And just finally what would you say would be the best feature of Burton upon Stadler? Best feature I just think the um, uh, the nature locally you know we go for quite a few walks um, in the local area both in the village and some some of the walks outside the village and when you're working in the week it's just really nice to escape it and to breathe a bit, a bit of fresh air um, so that's the thing that I like the most really absolutely absolutely fantastic thank you very much Dave thanks no for your thank thanks you for your much. input all the best and this has been the parish of Burton upon Stabber that's been Dave and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Thank you.